Hi, and welcome to February's editorial video. We have a great lineup of content this month. Hauke Lenthi from Nomadics has written an article that offers a great perspective of contactless technology. So make sure you have a read through that and also take a listen to the podcast. Okay, so let's get into the topic at hand. 62% of guests say the ability to request service from a mobile device is important to them. This is a stat from almost four years ago. If the same question was to be posed to the same people again, I think the response would even be higher now. With the changing health and safety procedures, guests are most likely looking for more opportunities to interact during their stay with as few touch points as possible. This, however, can often mean a human-to-human -human connection, which is established typically during the check-in process, is potentially potentially lost. Ensuring guests are made aware of the fact that they can still interact with the hotel via their devices is key to ensuring that the expectation of the guest is met. We live in a very different world now. Hotels are going to have to ensure they connect with their guests more and more in a digital and virtual environment. In 2019, a PwC article shared survey results that showed 70% of millennials are more likely to book a hotel with contactless options such as keyless entry and mobile payments. And again, I emphasize this is pre-COVID, so one can only assume that this number is higher now. Millennials make up over half of a hotel's guests. They are a critical demographic. They have always been price sensitive and location conscious. Technology is a key differentiator, and once we see recovery from COVID, will only become more important given the factors of social distancing and touchless service opportunities. Also in 2019, Crichton produced a report that discussed research identifying the technology that, that guests really want. And again, pre-COVID, this showed that 58% of travellers wanted the ability to check in via an app. Marriott International has recently gone on the record to say that prior to COVID, contactless solutions were not a priority. Even though they had the solutions available for their guests to use, they never really actively promoted them, most likely because they wanted to ensure that direct human connection with the guest, which is something technology typically cannot provide. These days, however, Marriott is actively promoting this option to their guests. Joining us in this video are two of our members to offer their insights, Neil James from ReviewPro and Samantha Knoll from Oki. There is quite a big pool of contactless technology to choose from especially now in this context. And uh, when it comes to priority, this, of course, may, may differ for each and every uh, hotel based on what their concept is, which guests they're attracting and what their needs are. Also, what kind of investment does it take and which return does it promise? Um, personally speaking, on a, on a broad scale, I think there are two uh, combinations of contactless technology that work well together and that are of high importance for both uh, the guest uh, and the employee, which also makes it important for the hoteliers themselves. Um, the first set uh, I'd like to share is quite a practical one. Uh, I believe that online check-in, check-out or, or digital check-in, check-out together with mobile um, payments go hand in hand together. Um, having these in place in any hotel ensures that at least the necessary and the transactional parts of the journey, which are not really the most exciting, to be honest, can be done as quickly and as smoothly as, uh, as possible and when the guest wants. Not all guests might want to check in online or pay contactless at all, but uh, what's most important is about giving that guest the choice each and every time. Um, speaking for myself, for example, when I when I travel for business and uh, I'm tight for time, uh, rushing from the airport to the hotel, having to drop things off in the room and uh, and run straight to a meeting, that's when checking in online up front really is, is a savior. But if I'm going on a week uh, for holiday, for example, I'm in a completely different mood and uh, and I might not think about preparing things up front and uh, and actually look forward to to doing the full experience the old fashioned way. Of course, if I've had a 12 hour flight uh, overnight, the first thing I might want to do is still rush to the room and freshen up. And that's when online check in uh, up front could come in handy again. I would say the key words here are really ease and uh, and flexibility and the same goes for for mobile payments that i mentioned before as well if it can be done fast and contactless why not 
There's no need to discuss money over the counter. And to be honest, I'd much rather have a friendly chat uh, and farewell uh, with a front desk agent, uh, if possible, on, on the way out rather than discussing money. So yeah, that's the, that's the first set uh, of contactless technology I think would, would sit high on the list for, for hoteliers in these times and also going forward. Uh, second set is a bit more of an experience related one and that's combining guest messaging uh, together with, uh, together with work, workflow collaboration software. Guests have different needs in terms of how they wish to communicate with hotels in, in different parts of the journey, uh, whether it's the booking phase, pre-arrival or, uh, or in-stay. Uh, it's important to be able to, to reach them uh, at the right time with the right message and, of course, on the right channel, whether that's websites or, or via email pre-stay or SMS when they arrive or, or via QR codes on property itself. This is something that our team at Oki, for example, is also investing uh, heavily into. And we want to make sure to optimize that, that conversion at each touch point with every relevant channel where we can. So not only to increase revenue, of course, but to really make it uh, a memorable experience for, for the guests. To be honest, it's been incredible to see that regardless of how, how much demand has fluctuated last year, um, that the average guest spend has, has remained high. And that shows that guests are still looking for experiences and they are booking things upfront contactless. Um, it, it's really up to providers like, like us, along with other guest engagement tools such as chatbots and, and messaging platforms to, to partner up and to enable hotels to proactively share news and offers that, that will excite them, but also to be able to efficiently react whenever guests have a question uh, that comes their way. In, uh, in times such as this, this COVID era, let's call it, it's become more important to facilitate this omni-channel communication between guests and hotels, whether it's because we're really restricted to, uh, uh, to socially distance or whether we feel more comfortable to, to interact online or whatever the reason, uh, the technology is there to facilitate it and guests expect to have this choice in, in the new normal. As important as it is for guests to communicate what they want, when they want, in, in that safe and reliable way, I believe it's, it's as important for hotel employees to have the same. And uh, this is where workflow collaboration tools come into play. These primar primarily uh, allow hotel teams to, of course, share SOPs with each other, distribute tasks, communicate with, with one another. And, and why I mention it in combination with guest messaging as a priority for hoteliers is because when you can integrate the two things together, that's when you can really achieve the proper potential to, to get that guest request and also address it seamlessly uh, in, in, uh, in operations as well. And uh, that pretty much sums up, let's say, the four key uh, contactless technologies I would recommend and think sit higher on the list. I think that when we're looking at the, the contactless check-in and check-out specifically now, um, it's a really key thing for hoteliers to be able to provide guests with the confidence that when they arrive at the property, first of all, they know they're not going to be in a queue with loads and loads of people. Secondly, that they can use technology that's already being used for uh, other industries right now. Um, but I think as well, you know, when we think about the COVID scenario, guests are going to want to know beforehand what are the protocols going to be when they get to the hotel. Uh, they want to know that they've done the check-in and they just need to go and pick up their key and there's not going to be loads of people hanging around. From a perspective of reducing, I suppose, the traffic within reception, etc., this is going to be really key to uh, increase the confidence of guests um, as, as uh, the industry starts to open up again. We have to think about the fact that as the industry opens back up again, we don't know how long it's going to take for occupancy to come back. That means that, you know, teams are going to be streamlined. Um, there's not going to be as many uh, staff possibly checking in the guests. So anything that can be done with the technology to kind of aid that and make sure that, you know, the staff are there in order to help during the um, dealing with other queries other than check in and check out that can be automated, then obviously this is going to improve the guest experience as well. You know, when we think about the contactless check-in and check-out. The other thing to bear in mind is a lot of systems now that also are providing the ability to connect to uh, keyless systems, right? Where you can actually 
open your door with your, your mobile phone, etc. So being able to put these systems together and make sure that, you know, a guest arrives, they know that they've checked in, they've passed their details and they know which room they need to go to and be able to, to get into the room uh, with their mobile phone. So I think that one is key. Um, then there's the guest messaging and chatbots. Um, so again, you know, bearing in mind that uh, for guests that are wanting to go and travel, one of the key things that they're going to want to know beforehand is what's happening at the hotel. Uh, what are the protocols? Are the restaurants open? What's the current uh, lockdown process within that particular region, if there is? Um, and, you know, this can generate a lot of questions and having the ability to be able to respond to a lot of those questions via a chatbot uh, makes it obviously a lot more efficient. It reduces the noise at the reception uh, and it makes sure that you've got consistency within your responses as well. It reduces the cues because if you think about all the times when you may have been in the hotel in the past and you've got a full queue of people that are there, uh, maybe 50% of that queue might actually be to check in or check out and the rest of the queue is to know how do I get to the bus stop, how do I get to the train station, what time is breakfast, where is it served and what time is the pool open, right? So this is all information that multiple guests ask over and over and over again. They're repeated questions that automation could basically deal with. Um, and if automation is dealing with that, then that means that the team that are still at the hotel can then deal with the guests and provide those guests that really need service with good service, right? Um, then on the other side as well, um, with these chatbots, you've got the ability to be able to integrate them with uh, booking engines. So, you know, you've got a guest, a potential guest maybe that comes online, having done a little bit of research to look at your particular hotel. They're asking some questions to the chatbot about, can I bring pets? Is the restaurant open for breakfast, etc.? And then all of a sudden, you know, they have the ability to ask, well, can I book a room to that particular chatbot? The chatbot provides them pictures of the rooms, the rates that are available and the ability then to uh, push them into the booking process. So obviously um, the, the messaging and the chatbot gives the ability to really deal with those questions that are repetitive, create some sales leads uh, via the, the booking engine integration. But more than anything, obviously, improve the guest experience at the at the property by making sure that the teams that are there are dealing with the guests that really needs uh, a close service um, and they're not just responding to repetitive questions. Uh, this technology out there like facial recognition, like we use on a daily basis, most of us with our smartphones these days, uh, you know, maybe things like that can help with check-in and activating elevators and uh, unlocking your rooms, etc. Um, you know, there's there's a lot out there, and I think, you know, when we, those are the technologies that I think we'll kind of see people talking about and thinking about adopting over time. Uh, but some of the drawbacks, obviously, is the I suppose the level of comfort of guests using those. Uh, I think you know it, now, um, post or during pandemic. Uh, I think, you know, we've all had to uh, adopt so much technology that people are going to be used to to using these kind of tools. Um, most people, I think, are going to be in a scenario where uh, it's just going to be the norm for them and they're going to be uh, willing to use them. But there will be certain things, maybe like the voice command or the facial recognition where, you know, people might struggle to trust it or you know they they will want a clear privacy policy in order to make sure that you know they know what's happening with that particular data and the other thing is is that I, I think more than anything you know when we're thinking about the various technologies that i've mentioned until now we need to make sure as well that we're giving our guests the option right so we can't just push a, an automated check-in check-out technology on them or we can't just push a chatbot on them. There needs to be a way for them to say, no, I really want to be able to speak to a human, right? And they need to have the choice of being able to say, thanks, but I don't want the online check-in. I'll check in when I get to the property uh, and not force them down a route that they feel uncomfortable in, in dealing with.
Uh, there's quite a lot of advantages, uh, I would say. So I'll try to summarize them uh, as, uh, as much as I can. For one, contactless technology really allows for tailored communication. Uh, at the right time and on the right channel, like we mentioned uh, just before. And the great thing is that the more data a hotel has about a guest, the more relevant it can, it can be uh, in the future. Of course, guests can have efficient and upfront service delivery thanks to contactless as well uh, before they even arrive uh, at the hotel. So whether it's doing a, a check-in online upfront, uh, whether it's confirming an upgrade uh, pre-stay, essentially it, it really helps to drive revenue with, uh, with less cost. Contactless also helps to improve operational efficiency. So anything that requires upfront preparation can be easily communicated and distributed in a, in a workflow tool. Uh, and any repetitive task that technology can take over really helps to free up resources from employees uh, as well so that they can focus on that human interaction that is really more meaningful. It's Especially in this time, also contactless does give the feeling of, of safety, which is incredibly important. Um, if physical touch points right now are, are deemed too, too risky, then contactless helps to, to eliminate that risk right now and also to, to bridge the gap until we can shift into another type of new normal. And one more I would say is um, that it helps hotels to to gather feedback and insights as well um, from customers, um, especially there in the moment, uh, so that they can have the opportunity for service recovery uh, during their stay, uh, or just in general to, uh, to learn more about how to better address guest needs in the future, thanks to the feedback that they do get. In terms of drawbacks, I wouldn't say there, there are many. Um, I think it's the uh, the never-ending battle, to be honest, of high-tech versus high-touch. I remember writing articles about this already eight years ago with that title, and, and it's still a key topic today. Um, I believe it's of varying importance to different people. It's, it's possible that some guests really love this entirely digital world, um, where some can really miss the human engagement, especially in such a COVID era with extra restrictions in place that that, that yeah, don't allow us to interact how we normally do, how we'd love to. That's where guest messaging actually becomes even more important uh, to help create that bond with the customer between the hotel and them. I would say it's, it's, it's really all about finding the right balance and how to ensure that, that tech supports the service delivery in a way that's, that's preferred by your guests. And uh, wherever it's possible, of course, give the guests the option to do what, what, what they prefer most. I would say another drawback could be in terms of shelf life and ROI as well, um, purely because there's a lot of uncertainty around it. There's questions such as, should I invest in this technology right now? Is it an urgent need? Will it still be needed after COVID? If not, is it worth the investment? So those are evaluations that, that need to take place on a case-by-case -case basis to help prevent any drawbacks from being there in the first place. There was a study, I believe, by McKinsey that said on average, some 70% of respondents plan to use digital services to the same degree or more after the COVID-19 crisis, right? So that's a really key number, you know, over 70% that realize, well, you know, these technologies that I've gotten used to that have made my life easier during a really, really difficult time is something that I just expect to be able to carry on. Uh, it's key to note that, you know, our habits are changing as people, as humans, as individuals, and therefore the guest experience that we're offering the guests when they go to the hotels needs to change along with that. As, as we move forward, the technology options that have been provided now, I think the majority of them are still going to be expected as we move forward. Uh, I think, you know, when people start traveling again, it's not going to be easy for us to just forget about COVID, right? Um, you know, as you start going out into hotels or into the workplace or wherever it might be, as individuals, we're still going to kind of cringe and turn around if we hear someone sneezing or if somebody comes to embrace us with a hug and, you know, there'll be that kind of uncomfortable scenario of do you or don't you, right? Um, and I think, you know, there's still going to be the need to 
deal with these queries from a distance, right? Deal with these things on a daily basis from a distance. Uh, and it's going to take time for us to get back to probably where we were. If when the industry is ready to open up again, you're a hotel that's decided not to adopt a lot of these things, you know, it's very likely that you're going to get negative feedback online in your reviews in surveys, etc. because you've just gone back to a normal process, right? So I think we're all going to need to kind of look at those technologies and realize that they're here to stay uh, and understand how they can help us to improve the experience in general. The technology is there now, it's been implemented. Um, it's a great opportunity for the social distancing, um, but it's also a great opportunity to kind of change people's habits so that they're used to going on their phone and speaking to the chatbot and saying, okay, how do I get breakfast or can I order some room service? Um, so yeah, in general, most of these technologies are here to stay. I would say the shelf life of this technology also really depends on, on which ones we are, we are looking at, since there's quite a few. I would say the ones that I mentioned earlier, such as guest messaging, online check-in, mobile payments, those, those are really here to stay and to enhance the experience for the guests, as well as uh, facilitate operations for the employees and, and the full team. Um, these are forming the new normal and becoming also part of, of uh, guest expectations. The more that one can do also from one's own device, whether it's my device as a guest or the employee's device, the more natural it, uh, it becomes. Uh, some, some technology that, that might fade, however, in importance, um, depends on how this pandemic develops or any future crisis uh, comes along. So let's say temperature checks and uh, track and trace software, these are important now to, to prevent, to spread the risk of, of COVID, but, but who knows how, how it continues. I think what is really key to, to remember from this experience is how quickly we can learn to adapt, to evaluate and, and really adopt new solutions that cater to the needs, to the needs of, of any future, future crisis. The aim of technology is to improve the guest experience. It's to make sure that when you go to a hotel or when a guest comes to your hotel, that their experience is improved and that, you know, the technology now that people are used to adopting can help us to succeed and, and actually push that forward, right? Uh, it makes operations more efficient. It creates scale. Uh, it's more flexible. People are given more choices. But it will also be obviously really key to provide better service when things do get back to normal. So when our teams are back to normal and we are at 80, 90, 100 percent occupancy again, you know, that's the time when this technology should be implemented in a way to make sure that the efficiencies are there, uh, that the guest experience is improved. And instead of at a reception desk, people looking down to do a check-in and look for a reservation or a guest having to repeat their reservation details, that instead there's no barrier, that there's a guest relations person out in front, welcome the guest, speaking to them, but knowing that, you know, the check-in's already done, complete, and they can go to their room. I would say it's, it's, it's really all about finding the right balance and how to ensure that that tech supports the service delivery in a way that's that's preferred by your guests and uh, wherever it's possible of course give the guests the option to do what, what what they prefer most no matter how you assess the situation whatever happens during and after COVID-19 there is no doubt that contactless technology has a major seat at the hotel technology table and must be given greater consideration. Hotel companies and major brands recognize the importance of embracing this technology more now to ensure that guests feel at ease during the stay and also of course to assist in finding other ways of improving their business. And this should really be a topic all hoteliers and hotel owners consider, no matter where they are positioned in the ecosystem, whether part of a major chain or global brand, or even an independent property in the English countryside. It is not a bad decision for hotels to look into and 
invest in contactless technology options. The key will be to ensure that hotels operationally embrace that technology and maximise their opportunities to engage with the guest through the technology. Not simply think that because the tech is there that they automatically are disconnected. That does not have to be the case. From research conducted even before the pandemic, it has been shown that guests do not want to disconnect from technology when staying at hotels. They want it to be immersive during the stay and to feel empowered by it. As soon as it becomes a distraction or is too complicated to use, the guest feels disconnected with the brand and then their stay. Give guests the ability to decide how little or how much they want to engage with the hotel throughout their entire journey. Make it clear and easy for them to make that connection. Resolve their issues as soon as they have been flagged and make them feel as safe as possible during their stay. Finally, if hotels put their guests' needs and safety at the top of the decision-making process, it will ensure they find ways to fully incorporate it into their business and feel confident about the next wave of mobile technologies that comes down the road, whatever that might be. Thank you so much for watching and as always, thank you for your support. It truly means a lot to us. Until next time, it's bye for now.